Great. Thanks for watching Web3 TV. I'm Nicole and I'm here with Jeremy Wood, co-founder of IOHK. And Jeremy, are you also titled co-founder of Cardano? I wouldn't say that it has a co-founder, but I was one of the founding members of the team. Yeah, yeah so you've been involved with Web3 from really from its inception, right? Because you were working um, on Ethereum before Cardano as well. Yeah, in uh, 2013, so my background here is in 2013, um, I took one of the Stanford uh, startup courses and then it had the, the person who taught that class was uh, Laji, who's now this, the CEO of Coinbase. So he was teaching that and he used Bitcoin in that class to uh, operate as a payment system and a voting system for the project. So after I took that class, I got really excited about blockchain and I joined uh, the BitShares community. And I was really excited about, you know, the future of blockchain. And uh, when I got a hold of uh, the Ethereum white paper, I saw that it, it had a lot of potential. So I contacted Alec and uh, he brought me onto the team. And then that's where I met Charles. I met Charles online. So, so I met him online and uh, I started doing administration for Ethereum. A couple months after that, I, I actually moved to the Ethereum house in Zurich and was working out of there for, for quite a while. Yeah, so when I say the word Web3, I had somebody yesterday, somebody who didn't work in, in blockchain or crypto say, that doesn't remind me, like, you need a blockchain name. And I was like, Web3 is a blockchain name. Yeah, so you know, I remember talking about this Web3 we, I mean, we actually had discussions about, about the naming of Web3. Uh, I remember it was in Switzerland. And some people liked it, some people didn't, but uh, yeah, people are using it. We don't use it at, at IOHK. And I'm not really sure why, actually, now that I think about it. But yeah, these protocols could be considered like the you know third generation web. Cardano had a really exciting announcement today, right? The balance check Ooh. test for the Shelly incentivized test net had to be, you had to show that your ADA Cardano tokens were in one of two wallets to qualify for the ADA rewards with the testnet? Yes, so we, we are having a um, um, incentivized testnet dry run release. On Thursday, I have to be here Thursday morning to uh, run some of the operational side stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I saw that we put out the video this morning. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually haven't watched the video yet, but uh, yeah, we're all pretty excited here. And um, there's a lot of activity. I haven't talked to people for four days because they're working so hard. Um, yeah, this is really exciting. I, I can't believe we've, uh, that the software is ready to go and um, that we're going to actually be able to check our balances. And then after that, we're going to actually be running the incentivized testnet. So can you tell us, a lot of our audience is really brand new to cryptocurrency, sort of like this, this broadcast serves as an introduction. So for anybody who doesn't know, what does that mean? What does that incentivized testnet mean? Right, so with Cardano, we're trying to achieve you know, an optimal decentralization. We have uh, different releases. This next release coming up is the Shelly release, and that signifies our approach to the optimal decentralization. So we should have, in the beginning, uh, uh, around 1,000 nodes running the system. Um, so these nodes are going to, we have a proof of stake system. So these nodes would actually be uh, producing blocks. Um, in Bitcoin, you know, the proof of work, uh, the miners produce the blocks. So the, the nodes are pretty much like miners. Okay, and so how many ADA tokens does someone need to run a, um, a node? That's a good question. In theory, anybody can, anybody can run a node, but you do have to, you do have to register your node. Uh, and you do have to um, get people to delegate to you. So not every Everybody has to run a node. If you own some ADA, you can delegate your ADA to a node, uh, and then they can produce blocks and get rewards for, for producing blocks, and then they will share those rewards with their delegates. So, um, so that way you can you can participate in the in the Cardano protocol without actually having to do all the hard work. So, are you saying that by staking Cardano tokens, someone could earn something of a passive income? Right. So. Um, in, in the proof of work system, you'd have to buy hardware and then you'd have to use that hardware. Uh, obviously you'd have to supply it with electricity. Uh, then you'd have to participate participate in the in the lottery type system that like Bitcoin has. Uh, in our system, uh, it's proof of stake. So uh, a node ideally will, will actually put some of their money into the uh, pledge, which is how you start a node. And then 
when they register, then you can come on, you can buy some ADA, you can come on, you can delegate that stake to the node and actually uh, support that, that, that node will actually run the network. Uh, when they produce blocks, they get rewards and then they can share those rewards with their delegates. That is really exciting, I think, for a lot of people, right? I mean, like decentralized finance is one of the big things, one of the big, you know, terms going around in crypto right now. Well, I, I do, I do, um, I do refer proof of stake over proof of work. Um, the nodes in the system can be, well, for, for one, they have an incentive to actually participate and be good citizens of the system. Uh, it's not very clear whether or not miners in the proof of work system, boys are incentivized to be good citizens of the system. Um, then on top of that, these nodes can also provide other services in the future for decentralized applications or, or decentralized organizations. Yeah, that makes sense to me too. But um, so within the proof of stake system, because you have delegated nodes, that means that there's no minimum number of tokens that a person needs to be holding to contribute? Yeah, well, I mean, your money, um, you can be throwing, you know, in a proof of work system, you're throwing away your money on hardware. That hardware is obviously going to get old. You're going to have to buy new hardware. Um, and some of your operational costs are always going to be going to, to, to the hardware. And then on top of that, you have the energy. Um, you've seen a lot of different reports about the energy consumption of proof of work. Um, some people are really worried about that. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's the end of the world um, how much money goes into maintaining these systems. If, I think Bill Gates actually made this point, which is, you know, the world monetary system takes trillions of dollars to run it has it has tons and tons of organizations in each country with thousands of people working um, and so if you could you can transfer all that over to the blockchain you're actually being way more efficient than the world system yeah I, I mean I think that too and I think that's one of the major appeals of cryptocurrency right is it retains some of the economic value of each transaction for the consumer Right, and uh, with proof of stake, we get that cost even cheaper. Um, as you know, uh, input output is written a, uh, a series of papers called the Ouroboros papers, um, proving that proof of stake is 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 the same has the same security guarantees as, as proof of work. So um, we obviously we think that you know proof of stake is great. Um, it's much cheaper. It's more efficient. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that, and I think that, that was a really great and comprehensive answer. Um, so. There's been other big news with IOHK and Cardano and your partnership with New Balance. Yeah, and that, that was a lot of fun. We actually went to LA and we were at the uh, the launch of the event. We got to stand, uh, I got to stand next to the checkout and watch people interact with the, with the uh, the card. So what we did was we we have a uh, verification solution uh, that we, we did in partnership with New Balance. Um, you can actually uh, register your shoes on the blockchain and then you can authenticate ownership of those shoes. But so does that help with uh, the fraud? Like, because there were several thousand New Balance shoes that were inauthentic found last year. Is that right? Yeah, it's more than that. It was. In, it's in the millions. Oh um, wow. Okay. Yeah, the the uh, counterfeit shoe market is huge. <laughs> it's it's massive. There's a lot of knockoffs. Um, and you know, so this product was a luxury product. It's a uh, or a collector's product product it's it's geared towards people who collect shoes and things like that and um obviously if you have have these shoes and you're buying these shoes you're often buying them from from a from another person so you want to make sure that they are actually legitimate shoes yeah no i uh i think that that's like actually i think that the blockchain in supply chain is one of the ways that i have attempted to you know get women interested in cryptocurrency because that has uh, that applies to fashion, you know, which some people care a lot about. Well, I have a, um, yeah, I have a friend who sells secondhand bags uh, in Asia and uh, he's been, he, he's taken special classes. Uh, he reads books, he gets a magazine and, uh, you know, he verifies the bags that he sells and he's been duped several times. So um, these, these counterfeits, they can be extremely good. Um, you can barely, barely tell. It takes, uh, it takes a lot of knowledge to, to figure out some, uh, you know, whether or not you have a real, a real bag or a real shoe. Um, and people who collect these things, it's really important to them. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, I agree. I think that the blockchain is a great solution for that. And I'm glad to see um, Cardano working with New Balance because actually I have one more New Balance question for you. Will you ask them to undiscontinue my favorite shoes, please? Please. Oh. I need them. That's your favorite shoe? What, what yeah. number is that one? It's Leadville. 
Oh, let, I've never seen that one. See, the soles of them are so worn out because it's been a long time. This is my fourth <laughs> pair. Well, I, 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 um, I started buying New Balance shoes 10 years ago because my knees were hurting and um, mm -hmm. I needed, it turned out I needed the wider shoe. And so I got that. I buy I buy the USA one because I love I love the USA. So I've been buying those for ten years. Yeah, I, I think the same thing. I tore my meniscus and then I needed to get better shoes. And the New Balance were the ones that were the most comfortable and they fit me the best. And uh, I think it's really cool that you guys are working with them. <laughs> okay, I'll let them know. <laughs> Um, so, all right, I have one more Cardano question, actually. So, Cardano recently released guidelines for using the Cardano symbol. Okay. Okay, so, um, I, I guess I was going to ask what led to that decision, um, because, like, I, like, were people using the symbol a lot to defame the project, the project, or to try and defraud the community? And I, I'm only asking because the guidelines aren't, like, really super typical in, like, the open source blockchain community. Okay. Well, well, first off, the Cardano um, protocol is, is ran by, uh, well, not ran, but it, it has three major stakeholders. One is Emergo out of Asia, um, and then there's Input Output, which is the uh, designer, the researcher, the scientist, the, the developers. Um, and then we have the Cardano Foundation. Mm -hmm. And the foundation is really, uh, it was a piece that needed to be put in there in order to protect Cata holders from, um, you know, the, the fraud. You know, there's a lot of fraud on Twitter, people trying to uh, always uh, get into somebody's wallet. So the Cardano Foundation, they spend a lot of time looking for these fra frauds um, and then warning people about that. And then uh, they are also responsible for doing things like this. So I, I do not know what's in the current one. I haven't um, I haven't been told about it. I haven't seen it. Uh, but it, it, I mean, Cardano is an open source uh, project. And um, yeah, everyone's everyone's free to do whatever they want. But they're, you know, the Cardano Foundation is there to provide guidance. So I need to get in touch with the Cardano Foundation about, and I'm going to share my screen with you, about okay. if I'm allowed to use this. No, I would, I would say that's, that's, that's great. I mean, um, if they came after you for that, I, I would be um, worried. Okay. Well, I think, I think maybe I'll still send an email just to make absolutely sure. Oh, well, now, I mean, I mean, in reality, even the, even the major companies, they're not going to, they're not going to come after people because it costs too much money. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, that's true. That's true. I just also don't want to do anything to get on anybody's bad side because we are still a very small community. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, it, makes you, it makes you feel better, but it looked that looked great to me. I think you would be fine. Thanks. All right, so you just mentioned right before this that you left WCC early to go trick or treating with your kids. That means that you must you married. Yep, yeah, married with two kids, a third on the way. Awesome! Congratulations. Is your wife interested in cryptocurrency? Hmm. Um. She, she, two year, a year and a half ago, maybe, mm -hmm. suddenly asked me about buying crypto. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turned out, and she's Japanese, so it turned out her Japanese friends um, were getting really excited about buying and trading crypto. So I told her, I told her, I said, look, we already have some crypto. We don't, we don't need more. But if you see anything that you like, let me know. Well, I wrote an article once for CCN called How to Get Your Girlfriend Interested in Cryptocurrency because there was a lot of like complaining in the Twitter community. And so I've like recently started this, um, started this thing like Crypto Love Line where like some of the guys are calling in with, uh, you know, questions. Yeah, so I mean, one of the, one of the one of the things that's going on right now in the crypto space is the race to um, utility. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us are living in the future. I've been living in the future basically for five years. I mean, that was one of the the great exciting things about the New Balance uh, project was because we actually launched it. It's out there in the real world, and you can see it. You can you can touch it and hold it. Um, but a lot of things that we work on right now are things that are still one year, two years, five years out. Um, so when you're talking to anybody about crypto, you're often you're often just talking about you know getting involved by holding some. You know, say hey, you know this is you know if you if you own a little bit of gold in your investment portfolio, you should own a little bit of crypto in your your investment portfolio. And that's it's a really boring conversation. <laughs> So the approach that I'm taking is not trying to get your, you know, significant other to invest in crypto. It's how to get that person interested in 
what's going on, you know, so that they want to teach themselves. So it's been so, stuff right. like supply chain, like, you know, yeah, like using blockchain to confirm supply chain. Um, right. Well, I mean, definitely the the authentication solution we did for New Balance would be a great topic then. Um, yeah. If you have designer purses, uh, you want to be able to prove those are real. In the future, you're going to be able to use those same certificates to get other benefits from these companies. So you're going to be part of a club when you when you have these credentials, and uh, those credentials prove that you belong in the club. And so you're going to get you're going to get perks for that. Yeah, I think that that is a really interesting and cool segue, and um, I'm excited about it. So, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you feel like I should have asked you that you want to share? That well, this is my uh, my first podcast, I guess. I'm okay. trying to think. Um, so, my my job here at Input Output's rather boring. I do a lot of operational things now. I'm a gap filler. I whenever there's a gap in the organization, I, I fill it until it, until we find someone else to do it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, I think it, getting yeah. people involved in crypto is important. Um, it is tricky though. It's a lot. It's like getting people involved in, in security of, of of their of their computer. I mean, you're like, okay, well, you should use a VPN. And they're like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, and then you have to explain what a VPN is, and then you have to explain that they have to pay five dollars a month for it. Uh, yeah. And then and then you have to turn it up. You actually have to turn it on. Um, and so. it makes your internet slower. <laughs> and it makes your right. Right, um, you know, so I often do negative branding for crypto, um, meaning that I, I say, hey, it's 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 slower, more difficult, and challenging to use right now. Uh, but that's what makes it cool. Um, <laughs> when the, I was an early internet user, an early computer user, I got my first computer at like five years old um, in 1983, and uh, yeah, so I've always been involved in technology, and it was really bad back then. Right. I mean, I mean, half the challenge is printing something, printing something. I mean, the printer always broke. I always had to fix it. It was always getting jammed. Uh, the paper was always coming off the little spikes. Uh, so, you know, but a lot of us love doing that kind of stuff. So if you, if you find somebody who likes doing that kind of stuff, kind of um, being an early user, you know, definitely tell them that they should be involved in crypto. Um, but then you find if somebody's just curious and wants to know about the future, just tell them, tell them how crypto is going to change the future. Um, you're going to have credentials, you're going to have crypto credentials, you're going to be using the blockchain to negotiate with websites and services and people. Uh, you're going to be carrying your assets. Um, you can own fractions of, of paintings. Instead of buying the whole painting, you can have a, a whole portfolio of different investments. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty exciting. I agree. I think that it's, you know, the thing that people will have missed out on in 20 years. I think so. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeremy Wood. What is that? What's your title at IOHK? We, we go with uh, Chief Strategy Officer. Okay. okay, Chief Strategy Officer. And how can people find you if they want to follow you on Twitter, Instagram? I'm on Twitter at, uh, I think, Jeremy underscore IOHK, although um, I don't I don't tweet like Charles tweets. Um, I knew long ago that Twitter was probably going to be an evil, bad place. <laughs> so well, if they want to the actually... Huh? Do you have the decentralized version? I, I forget what the name of it is, but there's the social media platforms that don't collect the user data? Um, I am on a few alternate social media sites, although I've also given up Facebook. I, 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 um, I'm glad that I, I got off that as well. I actually deleted it from my phone, which was good. Uh, but you know, these sites are still collecting information on me. So they're yeah. collecting it from my friends. They're, they're now, you know, Google just bought medical data. From, um, so now Google owns your medical data. Uh, or potentially could. I mean, this is, uh, it's getting out of hand, quite frankly. I, I get news uh, notices in the mail about hacks all the time from, from companies I've done business with. Uh, my credit card was stolen from an application that I did for an apartment a year ago and people trying to charge tickets to, to that credit card. I mean, it's, it's getting out of hand. So, you know, we're, work, we're working really hard to, uh, to solve these problems and make it a make it a more secure future. Yep, and that's one but, of the one of the things that cryptocurrency and cryptography is all about. Yeah. So, but if you want to contact me, you can contact me at uh, Jeremy.wood at iohk.io. Okay.
Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for doing this, Jeremy. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.